Today I want to talk to you about finding your voice. But before I do that, can I ask you to do me a favor? We're trying to build our community here on YouTube and if you would like and subscribe and uh, share and also push the notification bell, uh, that would do us a great service. So if you could do that, we'd be thankful and we could uh, build a larger audience right here on YouTube to speak about the importance of dialogue and conversation. So let's talk about finding your voice. You know, um, in Proverbs 18, we're told something very, very powerfully, that the power of the tongue is to bring life or death. That literally through our speech, we can either encourage and bless people or discourage and hurt them. There is literally the power of life and death in our tongue. You know, right now, there are so many voices shouting in the streets, in Portland, in Seattle, in Chicago, across this country, about social injustice, unrest, and all kinds of uh, issues that concern people. Some are protesting, but some are just into anarchy and division and destruction. We sometimes don't even know the difference between the two because of the crowds and how they commingle with one another. But right now, you and I, if we're people of faith and believe in God, we need to find our voice on social media, in crowds, in public conversations, in private conversations, because our voice matters. And if we use it to bless and encourage, we can bring life through that. If we use it to just uh, fill in the void with more anger and more contempt, we'll bring death and destruction. You know, Jesus has a good word for us in Luke 6. He says that it's what comes out of us that defines us. In other words, the words we use are what's in our heart. If our heart is full of bitterness and wrath and judgment and anger, well, that's what's gonna come out of us when we speak and when we talk. But when our heart is full of grace and mercy and kindness and love for other people, that's what's gonna come out of our speech. So that's so important. You know, you heard as a kid that uh, sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. Folks, that's a lie and we all know it. Because every one of us can trace back a feeling to our childhood when some kid or maybe our mom or dad or brother or sister or somebody said something nasty or mean or unkind to you and it's devastated you. You've held on to it for years and years and years and decades. That's the power of the tongue to bring death, to bring hurt, to bring pain. But when somebody has encouraged you and said something kind to you, well, that, that too can last for a long time, decades or so. People that encourage you when you were little or throughout your life or schooling or education, people said kind things to you and then inspired you to believe the best about yourself. That's the power of the tongue as well. So what's in our heart comes out and what we say really does matter. And a, a physical pain, a punch in the face, a slap, that lasts for a moment but words that hurt last forever or a very long time, as well as words that bless. So let's use our tongue to make a positive difference. Let's think about this a little bit more. In finding our voice, we need to understand something. Our voice should be used to bring benefit to others. We should use our speech, our mouth, to lift others up, to inspire them, to encourage them. Um, the Apostle Paul says this in Ephesians 4. He says, use your speech to encourage and edify, not to tear down and to destroy. You know, again, in Proverbs 13, we're reminded that the person who does not guard their speech will bring death to themselves. So again, it's so important to use our tongue wisely, but to find our voice. Now think about this. I can think of immediately three very inspiring moments in my schooling where a teacher said something to me that really inspired me. Back in uh, eighth grade, I had a teacher that said I was a leader, and I didn't think I was a leader. Um, when I asked her about that, she said, of course you're a leader, you're, you're one of the strongest leaders in our class. And I never saw myself like that, but I began to, and I was encouraged by that. Later on, I would have an English teacher who would tell me after uh, my ninth grade year that she thought one day she would read about me in a book or in an article because she thought God was gonna do great things in my life. And I was so caught off guard by that, but I was inspired by that and, uh, and so blessed. And when I had the chance of, of writing a book with my friend Robert Millett, it was such a blessing to be able to send her a copy and let her know that what she said to me was inspiring that way. I was even once told by the vice principal of our school that, uh, that she thought that if she ever had a child, she would like her child to be like me in the way that uh, I uh, acted and served around our, our school campus. So those three women have blessed me so that even throughout my adulthood, I look back on those comments and find inspiration. That's the power of the tongue. 
when we speak, we should speak in such a way to our children, to our friends, to our family, to our coworkers, not be afraid, but to speak in a way that benefits and, and lifts others up and speaks the truth in a time when truth is being tossed around like a beach ball and uh, anybody's truth is everybody's truth. But we have an opportunity as Christians, as God-fearing people, to speak truth in love with our speech to benefit others. And this is so valuable. An area that we all need to find our voice in is in an area that, that is reprehensible to all of us. The issue of slavery and sexual trafficking is growing rapidly, not only in foreign countries, but right here in America. And today, July 30th, the day that we're recording this video, is National Anti-Sexual Trafficking Day. And people all across this country are finding their voice to say, enough is enough. Children cannot be stolen and captured and kidnapped and put into sexual uh, trafficking for the, for the wicked pleasures of, of profane people who want to do perverse things to children. We're saying enough is enough. We're saying enough to those who would enslave people over a small emergency loan in a third world country uh, because their child needed desperate medical attention and now they're enslaved into a, a rock quarry or a brick making factory or a fish factory and they can never get out. Enough is enough. We are finding our voice. We all need to find our voice to say, stop it. This has got to stop. And that's important. That is so important. Proverbs 31 tells us, that we need to use our voice for those who cannot speak for themselves and for those who are destitute. There are people in this society, there are people in our world that can't speak. They don't have the political clout, they don't have the standard of, of living, they don't have, they don't have a presence in our society, so they can't speak for themselves. As a believer in God, I believe it's important for us to speak for those who cannot speak for themselves in the womb and to defend the sanctity of human life. I believe we need to find our voice and say to people that life matters and life is a gift from God. So whether it comes to trafficking issues or, or, or abortion issues or, or whatever other issues that are pertinent to our society, we as Christians, as followers of God, need not be silenced by the prevailing voices, need not be silenced by, by those who would tell us that we, we can't speak about God, we can't speak about our faith, we can't talk about those things that matter to us. Because, because that's not appropriate. No, it is appropriate. We matter, our voice matters, and when we use our voice, we can do great things for God because God says when we use our voice to speak up for those who cannot speak up for themselves, we are fulfilling His plan. We are doing His service and we are blessing Him and He will bless us through that. So I want to uh, strongly encourage you today, amidst all of the, the angry voices that are being shared on social media and on the news, let's start speaking up and using our voice to bless, not to curse, to encourage, not to despair, to lift up other people and to say, hey, we live in a place where we can freely practice our faith. We live in a place where we're free to speak our mind. We're free to enjoy the blessings of life in this country. This is a great country. And we're gonna stand up and use our voice to make a contribution to making America better and to blessing our country and to helping other people see that there is a brighter day ahead.